In this video I'm going to show you how to export your Shafter project. Um, I'm also going to show you some finishing touches first that I've applied to my project um, so you can get a sense of um, some of the things you need to do to put the fine tuning. Um, first and foremost, <clears throat> I noticed when I did my roll credit I actually had a spelling error so it's important of course that you go through all of your titles and make sure everything is um, spelt appropriately. Um, so now I've got that done and I've got the timing of my roll title at the end to a point that I'm happy with and as you can see this bar everything is green so everything is actually um, rendered out properly right now. Um, so I'm just going to expand the timeline using the plus um, to go in and show you some finishing touches that I have applied. So there's a number of things that you can do just to up the um, production value of your project. So the first thing I'm going to point out is all of my audio has some sort of transition. The one that I've applied here is a very simple one. Um, it's a simple two-frame um, transition, and I've applied that using the key command uh, Shift Command D. Um, but in order to make sure it's simply two frames and not uh, much longer, and you can see you can always adjust it later. Um, the minimum is two frames in um, Premiere Pro, or it was previously. In order to ensure that, you actually have to go into the preferences and make sure that it's set up appropriately. So if I go into Premiere Pro Preferences General, under Audio Transition Default Duration, I already have mine preset to two frames. Um, so whenever I use the key command, Shift Command D with an audio track selected, it's going to automatically apply that two frame transition um, to my audio track. Now that's important because you never want an audio track to simply cut in. You always want it to ease in and that little two frame transition on all your audio tracks is a really important um, transition. So we're going to move down here to this audio transition because this one I did manually with my pen tool um, right here. But you'll notice that the line there is a little curved. So what I actually did was if you control click on uh, the keyframe that you made with the pen tool, you can make an adjustment so that a Bezier adjustment so that it eases that gentler as opposed to simply um, doing the straight linear thing. So the Bezier just kind of makes it more of a curved line, um, which kind of adds to a nice little default, um, a nice little effect. That. So there you go, you have that um, curved line from that one. I did a similar thing to my title here, so let's just expand that. Uh, Command plus will bring up my size here. So this is my title shafter right here. And I'll just play the title so you see it comes in, but then it slows down as it's coming in. It kind of doesn't ease, it doesn't stop abruptly. So just by double clicking on Shafter, whoops, um, I want to bring this, I want to bring this up over here. And you can see when I go into effect controls um, on my title here, I have gone in and I did the same thing. I did a control click right on the keyframe I had created. That is where the motion where the position stops that I've keyframed and I've gone into temporal interpolation and I can do ease in or something like that and one and those will you see it stops nice and slow 
and those will actually now if I um, undo let's see if I can put it back to linear um, what happens it just kind of stops abruptly um, so with that sort of ease in or bezier effect comes to a slower stop um, so that's another thing you can do um, and of course I just fade that out with the pen tool uh, one thing I did that I didn't make a video but I provided you with um, some tutorials on was to create this 3D parallax effect this one was done with combination of Photoshop and After Effects and you can see um, just what it looks like when I play it so you're essentially taking a 2D image and kind of creating a 3D effect and what I did was I continued some motion on the next frame because I felt that going from that image to a static image was a little jarring and then on the third one I made the movement even more subtle and then the fourth one has none so essentially what I've done there with those three images is I started with a real uh, quirky 3D effect and I felt going from that motion to this basic uh, image static was too much of an abrupt transition so I made this one move and then the third one, also this one lines up with the line from the song. It's about traveling the lonesome highway. And then the third one, I just made it such a subtle movement um, to keep that sort of easing them out of this crazy effect that I've applied. So this effect you will find in your instructions multiple um Uh, video tutorials on how to do it and I have supplied those to you the first link is the one that I used it's fairly involved but it's a it's a really cool technique to learn um, for anyone who's gonna go on and do more work as a video or a motion um, producer um, and I guess that's about it so once I've produced the video I've gone through it I've watched it several times I've tried to make the timing and the changes all really nice and smooth. Um, so now I'm ready to export. Everything is rendered. I'm going to do a Command S because the star tells me I need to save it. And now I'm ready to export. I'm going to go File, Export Media. And the first thing I have to do is change the output name it's not going to be called demo that's just the name that I had applied to my sequence last name first initial underscore shafter is the title I'm going to ask you to use you want to select where it goes because you want to make sure you know exactly where this is being exported to your format is going to be H264 um, that is the default web codec for video and for this one you're gonna export like a full-size HD video we'll um, use this project down the road to explore um, using alternate sizes for social media etc this one will just make um, full-size video and we're actually going to use a Vimeo preset here 1080p HD um, once you have all of that set we're not going to go into any other of these actually if you want a higher quality you can go VBR 2 pass and you can up the maximum bit rate a little bit um, it's going to give you a higher uh, quality it's also going to give you a larger file size um, and then once you you can even use a maximum render quality all of this is going to slow down the process of exporting it 
But once you have that set, you can go ahead and click export and you can see um, it starts to do its work immediately. Um, go get yourself a cup of coffee and this will be exported and ready for you to hand in uh, when you come back.